Hello, welcome everyone in Analog Layout video series. Uh, in my previous video, basically I demonstrated the routing techniques of any analog circuit. And unfortunately at that time, uh, my screen sharing option uh, did not work properly basically. So I'm sharing the video. Uh, basically, this video where I try to explain the routing technique. But somehow, uh, I after explaining the theory, whenever I demonstrated the routing, I think that my screen share did not work properly. Therefore, uh, most of you or basically uh, you cannot see any routing here. Okay. So in this video, I am explaining the routing portion. <clears throat> but uh, before this routing, I recommended to you that you must um, watch this video around um, the 15 to 20 minutes until um, this basic, basically. Because here I explained some basic which you should keep in mind whenever you are doing a layout, okay? Let's begin in my new video. <clears throat> so hopefully now my screen share properly working. I am recheck again. Realize you using Zoom for recording my video. Okay. I think now <clears throat> it's what. Okay. What's the problem basically? Mm, stop share. Share. Your screen. Okay. Okay. So let's see how to route the analog circuitry. And whatever I am demonstrating here, the routing of the differential pair, right? So if quickly I jump into routing, then you can see that. Yeah, these are my dummy. And so I should merge all of this dummy with metal one like this. I'm demonstrating here again. So this is the my dummy, okay? And I explained my previous video, why and how and the necessity of dummy. So whatever you are doing, you should make this, this is now fully selected, right? But you should, it should be partially selected. For partially select, you should press F4. If you press F4, then any metal or anything, you can select partially here. So I need to merge this metal one with this, okay? This is done. So the same thing I want to do for the bottom dummies. So I am copying this. And I am placing this metal one here. After that, I press A, F3. And I am selecting that no spacing option. And then hide it. And I want to merge this layer with this layer. Then you can see, basically, this is the my dummy, OK? If I active the oxide layer, Oh, sorry, not the oxide. I want uh, the poly layer. You can see these are my dummy. Same case here. Basically, if I active metal one here, one here, as it is my dummy, so I want to merge everything together. Okay. It is a my dummy transistor, okay? So for dummy, I should type my gate drain source together. Okay, it's connected together. The same thing I should do with here.
whenever you do your routing, you should route everything nicely, okay? I'm just uh, demonstrating here that something, how should route everything? Yeah. For this also, okay, I'm not completing this one, just you should uh, connect the gate drain source, everything of the dummy with a same potential. Basically, we should uh, do dummy like this, okay? And okay, now I am interested in my active layer. This is the, my active dummy, okay? You can see if I go to the schematic and if you can see, these are my active dummy, okay? So I am interested to my active dummy. So I should do that. So for this, uh, I need basically, <clears throat> you should read your schematic very well, okay? You can see, Mm, for each transistor, there are three pin, drain, gate, and source. And here you can see that uh, the source is connected in P tail. Okay, so whatever you should do for the differential pair, mm, for the tail current source, you should draw two metal like this, two metal two like this. Uh, you can see. Mm this it bss okay it should not bss okay this should be p tail and this one also p tail okay and then mean whatever you should do, this is the source connection, right? And let's say it is not source. Let's say it is also possible to uh, make analog circuit using PMOS differential pair. So for PMOS differential pair, uh, this node connected sometimes in BTD or in the high end potential, or it may be anything. This node may be VSS, Forget about differential pair for any circuit where messing is necessary for current mirror, anything where you should match. Um, always try to connect P tail, it is a source. If it is ground, then it is also a source. And if it is a VDD, it is also a source. Okay. So whenever you will find any um, current source or voltage source, uh, try to route to metal two for this. So uh, therefore, I uh, draw a two pay tail because it is connected to source because uh, there would be one physical current source here. And this is my IRF1. And for this, uh, you can see this is IRF2, okay? And you should do everything for all of this, okay? You should, I should do the same thing with all of this. I'm not doing this one. I'm just showing you one correction. And after that, uh, one more thing, whatever I did here, uh basically i increase the width of is drain and source you can see i in it was is basically initial drain but it is very narrow metal here and for narrow metal uh you cannot fit to be here so it is a good decision if if it is possible if there is space then you can uh, use a wider metal or you can mm, basically you can increase the width of your drain and source terminal uh, because if you increase the metal on resistance also decrease as well as you can fit to via here okay so now now if i active this layer and then you should connect via here and then if i go for auto via then you can see there are lots of via is right now fitting here so if so in this way basically you should connect the layer okay i am connecting here randomly let's say it is irf tools okay then this via will go here what is this p tail then i know this is my p tail and this is my p tail okay and what is this 
This is also I F one. Okay, now you can see. Uh, let's see if I draw metal two here, and if I try to put V here, then you can see in here basically I cannot put too much V like this. Here basically you can see a lots of V here. So for this, whatever I should do there, I also should increase the width of this terminal. Then I can fit too much V here. Okay, and I should do same thing for all of the transistor. I'm not interested to make this video too long. I'm just showing you the process, whatever you should follow. And after that, as, as my theory of that uh, routing in my previous video, I explained that uh, every time we should go to the middle point of the circuit, okay? So let's say, uh, your circuit might be like this. Okay, I'm sharing you something. Yeah. I'm sharing my whiteboard here. Let's say how this circuit basically looks like. This circuit basically looks like this one. This may be the differential pair. And here may be a current source, okay? If you search the, uh, the circuit diagram of two stage OPAM, you will find a similar types of connection. Yeah? This, this is my tail current source here, right? And here, basically there is a connection. What should I do? This connection is the PMOS connection. It, it looks like this. My drawing is not good. Here I just want to explain that. So this terminal, this terminal is connected to a current mirror or any other circuit, okay? So you should careful about this two terminal, okay? So whenever you are connecting something here, you always go to the middle point of the circuit mean and right now if i go to my screen again then you can see this is the two point right with whatever i right now uh, draw that on the whiteboard. This is this two point, and this two point may be connected somewhere else. Okay, so whenever I connecting any external signal, or if I try to sync current or source current in, in this circuitry, so I should always go to the middle point. Whatever I am explaining every time. So what this middle point mean? This middle point mean if I need to any connection with IF one, I never make any connection like this i never make any connection like this okay i i do not take anything from here or i never take any connection from here it is possible that i can make connection from here but i never do like this this is a wrong connection and uh, this basically there are some offset because you transistor are properly matched but you should also match the current, whatever I explained in my previous video. So to matching the current in analog layout, what you should do, basically in that case, we need metal three here. I suppose we have some metal three doing here. Oh no, how is, what happened here? Metal okay, I'm drawing again for you. And I also explained here, here I'm using the width is 0.76 and it can carry maximum 760 microampere current here. Okay. One more thing. 
Okay. Here you can see I draw four line of metal two. And so can I draw four metal anyway? Or is there any measurement? Yes, there is also measurement. You can see if I active this layer, this is the poly layer, okay? And this is my active device. So if I, whenever I draw any metal in this device, I also show, I also draw this metal uh, perfectly middle of this device, okay? I cannot draw here, I cannot draw here. I should draw exactly middle of this device. So everything is going to the middle point. I mean that the distance between this metal to this poly and the distance between this metal to and this poly should be exactly same, exactly same. And the and the distance between these two metal also, this every metal should be exactly same. So you should draw metal four, sorry, metal two with exactly middle of the devices, okay? As well as, uh, let's say I'm drawing here metal three, right? So, and I need four metal three. So can I draw four metal three like this? Never. I should maintain the same distance for every metal three here. It is maintaining the minimum distance. And everything should be perfectly aligned. Otherwise, uh, you whatever you do matching purpose, but you surely get offset. Okay, this will be PTL, and this connection also be PTL here. I'm not sure whatever I try to explain you, you people understand or not. Yeah. This is either one and this is IF two. Okay, and then I should connect P tail. Let's say this is my P tail. Okay, so I should connect. I know this is my P tail, right? And this is also my P tail. So in this way, I should connect everywhere as well as. Uh, this is my IDF2, right? Uh, I should connect IDF2 here and everywhere, everywhere. In the similar way, I should connect IDF1 here. And one more thing, whatever I explained that, I'm explaining the same thing. Uh, I always go to middle point. So I also should measure the distance between here. So this is, it is you can see it's 20.52 micron and distance between here to the outer metal one is 20.31 so you can see there is a mismatch so whatever I should do I should do slightly move here or what is the trick I am explaining you here what you can do this task very quickly you should measure this entire distance this entire distance is 3.79. Is it? Okay. It should not. Okay. Let me check. Okay. The entire distance, this four metal is containing 3.79 space. Okay. Then I should measure this distance properly, properly. The distance is 40.62. Then if I go to calculator tool, then you can see it's 45.62 minus, what was this distance? This metal two. Think three point something seven, yeah, three point seven nine. It is 
3.79. Then I should divide this divided by 2. Then I can find the 20.915. Okay. Then I can select this matter. I just can choose user spacing 20 point. 915, 915, right, I can align this from the most outer metal one. Now, if you measure, you can find this metal 3 is now exactly middle of the circuit, okay? Right now, whatever I explained that, so if you need any connection to upper side, for IDF1 and IDF2, whatever you should do, you should connect from here. You should connect, you should take connection from here. Let's say for this, you also need metal two connection, okay? Let's say this is a, you also need metal two here. You need three metal to it, okay? And always try to maintain the distance. Minimum spacing. This layer from this layer. Oh no. Minimum spacing. This layer to this layer. This layer to this layer. Exactly the same way. This layer to this layer. Okay. And now you can name, let's say, it is my, let's say it is my pretend. It is my IDF1 and let's say it is my IDF2. Okay, whatever you're doing, but I try to explain you that you need this one, okay? And in this level, I don't need metal one here, so I should connect O2 via. This is P10, so I should connect PTL with PTL, okay. So this is my PTL. So I am connecting PTL here, okay. And let's say it is my IDF1. And this is my IDF1. So I should connect IDF1 with IDF1 and IDF2 with. I have two. Okay, you, you can make connection very carefully. I'm just demonstrating you. Then you should connect IDF from here. If you need any connection, if you need any connection, you can connect PTL from here or PTL from here. Okay, so everything comes in the middle point and go down and it spread to from middle point to the entire circuit. This is the point I try to explain here. Okay, and I hope that this video will be helpful for most of the guys, basically who are learning the analog layout specially. And in my next video, I should explain how to route the gate connection because the gate connection also be crucial. And it's not like that, like digital circuit, you can route the gate uh, somehow and it will you will pass the DRC and LBS. You can pass DRC, you can pass LBS, but you will never pass post layout simulation. After post layout simulation, your circuit must not work if you do not route your gate properly. And there is also a system, one professional system to route your the gate connection. Okay, in my next video, I'll show. But right now, 
in this video you can understand the basic idea that what should you do you should route metal to like this you should connect source drone and go to the middle point and you also should route the metal three in the middle point also okay if this circuit is too much big then let's say if there is any bss then i also draw some bss after some spacing I mean maybe in my previous video or sorry in my next video or some time or if i get time then i will make some video with a big device then you can understand that for the big device you also should need to connect bdd and bss uh, properly mm, otherwise this one single connection connection is not sometimes sufficient whenever your circuit is very power hungry or if it is demanding more current or more power okay it's maybe a different issue next time i will also explain with you but in this video i hope that you understand that how should do the analog layout and routing specially and in my previous video i already explained that what should you do uh, basically i explained some theory here and i'm also showing my video here my previous video if i go to my channel and then that video basically i explained the theory and unfortunately the layout portion mm -hmm. it's if you, not if recorded clear. perfectly so and therefore today i uh, made a separate everything for this layout purpose only okay hopefully this video is helpful for you and bye for now best of luck and must subscribe and share with your friends